Back in 2017, I joined a waitlist to buy a PSIO. PSIO is a ODE optical disk drive emulator for the PlayStation 1. And it's kind of cool because it actually lets you also be able to play original discs on your PlayStation. Fast forward to 2020 and one of the most hyped products of the year has got to be the X Station. The X Station is a relatively new ODE for the PlayStation 1. And while it doesn't allow you to use discs in your console, it does allow you to use SD cards like the PSIO. It offers better game compatibility and actually faster loading times. I'm really excited to do this mod and the cherry on top has gotta be this 3D printed mount from LaserRare. This X station is going into a 5501 PlayStation. So let's hop over to the bench and see what this mod's all about. I've got the X station installation guide pulled up on my phone. First things first is take apart this console so that we can get to the motherboard. Just to confirm, if we flip this motherboard over, you can see that this is a PU18 motherboard, which is what we need for this install. This is a pretty interesting giant copper sheet here. Huh. Next thing we've got to do is lift some of the pins on this chip down here. I think there's eight of them. I'm going to use this kind of bendy tip on my soldering iron. I'm not really sure what you call this, but I'm going to use this and an X-Acto knife to gently heat up the pin and then use the X-Acto knife as kind of a little bit of a, a lever to lift the pins. Let's flip the board around so we get a better angle. We're gonna start with this pin 80 here in the bottom right corner. I'm just gonna heat up the pin with the soldering iron and then use the X-Acto knife to sort of pry it up. This might be a little hard because I'm right-handed and I'm holding the iron with my left hand. It really didn't take a lot of heat, and I was able to, might be hard to get on the camera. Yeah, it's really hard to get on the camera, but I was able to use this little flathead screwdriver to pry it up even further. Now we're gonna skip one pin and go to 78 and 77. These ones are a little harder because they're kind of in the middle of this chip. I'm gonna actually try switching hands again. Seventy seven, let's do seventy eight. Sorry if this is kind of hard to see, and my hands are a little bit shaky, but they're seventy seven and seventy eight. There really isn't a lot of solder on these pins, and they might be a little bit delicate, so just go slow and take your time. But they should all come off really pretty quickly. You shouldn't have to hold the soldering iron down for very long. Those, the joints on the, the pads on the, for the pin heat up really quickly and so you can take the pins off fairly quickly. Okay, now we're gonna skip over two more from 77 and do 74.
last pin to lift on this edge is 56. So it might actually be easier to count backwards from this 51 leg number here on the edge and just go six over. Okay, that was 56. This one was kind of hard because it's floating in the middle of all these different pins. So it's hard to judge with my eyes where that pin was, but just be patient, take your time, double check, and make sure you're lifting the right pin. Okay, now we're gonna rotate again. Okay, now on this bottom edge, there's three left. There's 47, 46, and 45. Count from the 50 and skip three, and then the next three need to be lifted. I think that's it, at least for lifting pins on this side. We're gonna flip it over and do some work on the back. Next step is to solder this quick solder board or QSB on the back side here. I've swapped out that bent tip just for the normal chisel tip. This board is gonna go right about here on the board, but there's two spots that we're going to have to use this scratch pen, or I guess you could use a, an exact, a dull X-Acto knife if you want to, but I'm gonna use a scratch pen to remove some of the solder mask and pre-solder two points on either side of this board. The first one is here on this pad here. So let's take this board off and do a little scratch. Should be good. And the other one is going to be on the other side here, that via right there. All right, let's try to get some solder on these. Hmm, that's not working really well. I think using the X-Acto knife is actually easier. Yeah, this one is really annoying, but I think we were good. It's pretty important to line all the holes up across the whole QSB to make sure it's not, because once you start soldering, it's gonna be really difficult, actually impossible, pretty much to straighten it out. So you wanna make sure that all the holes are lined up before you start. Once you do one, just kind of check around and make sure all the other holes line up.
these holes in the middle of the board, I would apply a little bit more heat. That way it can get through this QSB and attach to the pads in the middle there. That's it for everything over here, and now we have to remove this resistor by this black chip over here. Okay, with that resistor gone, we have to take a length of wire and run a wire from this pad on the QSB to a pad that's just to the left of that resistor that we just removed. So the resistor was here, the pad is directly to the left of it right there. Let's go ahead and tin it. And the pad on the QSB. I'm gonna use this kind of crappy 28 gauge, like single wire, stranded wire. I don't really like this because the jacket melts really quickly, but yeah, this should do the trick. Okay, let's attach this side. Measure it. All right, that's it for the soldering. Now we just gotta do one small thing to the case and then we can put the X station parts together. With some side cutters, let's just remove this little nub here. She gone. This is rattling around inside the case, not sure. Oh my God, is that a piece of disc? This piece of disc was rattling around inside this PlayStation. I bought this off eBay, but like that looks like a p a corner of disc. What? Very weird. Wonder what game this was. Oh, there's more of it. What? That is the weirdest. All right, so now got to take the ribbon cable and attach it here to the QSB. So we're gonna pull these tabs forward and lay it blue side up. into the hole there and then very carefully close it up I think we need to put this shield back in first like so and then we can place the board back on top and now the ribbon cable goes through this little slot here in the top shield Okay, now we've got to attach these little white spacers to the corners of the X station itself. And let's kind of pre-bend this ribbon cable. I think we've got to do one of these. One of these. And one of those, kind of making a origami. All right, let's just position the cable like this and then the X station gets oriented like that. And it kind of fits over the pins that were holding in the uh, 
the disk drive. Only thing left is to attach the cable here. Again, blue side up. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna put my shield thing here in. I think it goes this way. Yeah, something like something like that. Kind of clips in. I did a goof. You're not supposed to use the white pegs if you're going to use the SD card mount. Okay. The X station has to sit as far down on these little pegs as it can go and then the mount goes on top. Like so. I'm going to get everything buttoned up here and go test this X station. When I first tested the X station, the X station wouldn't load and the PlayStation would go to this memory card screen. That basically means that the X station is not installed correctly. There's actually a whole page on the X station documentation about that specific issue. There's a couple of steps they have on there for troubleshooting this issue, such as reseating the Flatflex cable, resoldering the QSB. There's actually a QSB test point picture which tells you that you can use continuity on a multimeter to test between the points in the QSB and the PS1 motherboard to see if it's making connection. I basically just touched up the soldering on the QSB. I went over each point and I kind of heated it up again. I used a little bit of flux. After that, it seemed to be working fine. And as you can see, it loads up great. All the games that are on the SD card show up in the X station menu and the load times are really fast. I loaded up a couple of games and I didn't run into any compatibility issues, so that's good. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and get subscribed too for more goodies coming to this PlayStation 1. I'll see you in the next video.